Garand is a winner, three times British Enduro champion, captain of the British team, and at the beginning of October, second in the international six-day event, second in the world. The Joneses are a family of professionals, first-class farmers, here in the Welsh hills near Plynlimmon, where Garand farms with his father and his brother, my brother Gareth, he himself has been a very good uh, rider in his day, but had an injury to his wrist and had to give up. We used the motorbikes for gathering the sheep and shepherding, etc. They tend to be better than sheep dogs, actually, because provide you keep fuel in them, they never get tired. When you're using the motorcycle for gathering sheep, you have to be very careful not to uh, rush the sheep too much. Otherwise, you get them running downhill and jibbing, and you end up having to carry them. The terrain for gathering the sheep is very good practice for uh, the endurers. <laughs> There's no doubt Garant loves this place, but there are no frills in hill farming. His mother has had to wait 15 years for a new kitchen. The land, cattle and the sheep must come first. We sort of put about 600 of our ewes to the speckle face rams to breed uh, ewes for sale and rams for sale. But the rest of the ewes, anything sort of the old ewes or anything with damaged teeth, we cross with the Suffolk ram to get some bigger lambs and to make sure that we don't use these use with damaged teeth and what have you for breeding for the main flock. With the lambs, how does taking a fat affect your policy? Because really you're basically all grass. I mean, how do you get enough grass to fatten them on? Well, fertiliser, top dress most of the uh, aftermath and what have you after silage and hay. And then we grow 25, 30 acres of roots, usually about six, seven acres of swedes, and they're folded off throughout the winter months after the grass stops growing. What sort of price are you going to make this year? What will your average? Oh, I suppose taking it all through, <coughs> I'd like to think we'll average about 34, 35 pound a head. One job of this you must do is lambing time. Do you ever worry when you're on the bike you might break your leg? Oh yes, I do. <coughs> it's a big problem, but uh, it's something that you've got to try and put in the back of your mind and forget about, because if you're going to worry about things like that, you're not going to perform properly on the bike. And this is the Brecon Beacons, the sort of country that he and a hundred other masochists ride over for eight hours or more, two days running. As important as endurance is a speed test over a special section. This corn is very tight and I'm going to need to come in close rather than out there to get round this post quickly and on line for the next bend there. If I come in over here, I'll be wasting too much time it's important to come in very tight, just here. There'll be a nice berm on this corner, a nice rut to get the power on out. There again, there's a lot of water here, so I'll just check to see how soft this is, but it's not. Okay. It's not going to get very boggy at all. It's water running on rock. What I tend to do is walk, say, 200 yards, then just stop and look back over it and try and memorize anything that stands out about it. Try to split the course up into about four different sections, because there's usually some obstacle somewhere which sticks in your mind. It's usually a rock or a bog, a soft spot, something like this. Now I'm looking for the lowest point of takeoff here, because you're going to jump quite a long way down over this ledge. I should imagine 20 yards maybe. So it's important to try and keep it low rather than go off there high, lose control and come off. So I think I'm going to go off about here and jump down. <laughs> the 
special test is a very important part of the course. You need to ride it as fast as you possibly can, because the events are usually won and lost on the special stages. The special test is generally some of the easiest terrain to ride, but uh, a lot of the course is run through forestry, a majority of it, through some very nasty sort of going, where some of the clubman riders get into an awful lot of trouble. If you're doing a lot of legging and heaving and pushing, you're taking a, a lot of energy, and uh, you can have difficulty to perform for eight, nine hours efficiently. This is one of the difficult parts of the course, which uh, my brother and uh, his friend have found and come to check on, to make sure that we can get through it okay. It's important to have a good backup or service crew, because then you can pass on information about bad bits of the course, and if they're on the ball, they can get there, possibly find a better line or give you a hand. <laughs> Strictly speaking, you're not supposed to have any outside assistance whatsoever. But when the course gets very bad and very cut up, it's, well, it's almost impossible to write some of it without a, without a bit of help from someone. need to have very strong legs because you spend half your time waggling them either side of the bike. You know, the art is to be able to ride the machine and keep your feet on the footrest if it's at all possible, because this takes less energy. You have to, to think a lot, think ahead and think of alternative routes, because this particular piece is getting very badly cut up now. And this may be the first lap, so on the third lap, you've got to be thinking of another way through here. Maybe two or three yards to the left or to the right. It's the end of the day. We've covered 190 miles of going, and we're coming in now for the last control of the day. What's the time? Time. Time, come on, get going. 28. Gareth just keeps an eye on the time and makes sure that everything's been done properly. And he also talks me through some of the tasks because it's always easier for someone who's watching to see what's going wrong or what you should be doing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, he hasn't lost any time. That makes a big. It's the main thing. I think he's there. He won the two special stages. I don't know what he did in the last one, so I just hope he's done well on that. Well, the special test now. Ready for tomorrow. Then home, have a meal and a good night's sleep. Back here in the morning at eight o'clock. Yeah. Get a ten minutes work period in the morning. Put a new tyre on. I only got six minutes when I came in tonight. And with two security bolts, it's touch and go as to whether you'll manage to get it done in six minutes. In the morning, I get ten minutes. I've done half the job because the tyre's more or less off. Tomorrow, it's only just a matter of whip the wheel out and the tyre drop off. You fit a new one in. Have a good sleep. Yeah, need it. <laughs> uh, well, we'll take the, the cattle from here out 
to there, to the side there, and we'll take him down the wood. Yeah. And then we'll pick the creep feeder up with the track there and take it from here and down the road to Penland. Right. Geraint's father is a perfectionist. He spent 20 years improving these hills, so it's easy to forget that you're a thousand feet up. But it's mid-October. Winter will soon be here, so it's time to get the cattle down to the lowland pastures in the valley. Despite grants and subsidies, hill farming has always been a hard life. The difference between profit and loss is good farming and, above all, good stockmanship. Mr Jones has given his boys a fine start, as they both appreciate, and the three of them still work together as a splendid team. Since 1977, I have bought uh, 600 acres. Do you think you can do that again today? That's oh, sort of... no. Uh, uh, no way could I do it. No way could I do it today. Uh, land prices are going well outside uh, their values. Uh, you could see land rising in those days and you could see as you could a uh, future in it, but today you can't. Mind you, there was also about 1980 when we were paying over 20% interest. That must have been interesting. Oh, well, uh, that was quite frightening. But uh, still at that time I could see I could about manage it. And uh, we could see as uh, the bank rate wasn't going to hang on for many years at 20% as it was bound to come down and the present day we are all right again. Now on top of buying all this land, you've also improved it. This piece of land here, I mean this is about the limit, isn't it? Oh, that is the limit. I should say it's as close to two in one as any land about as we've seen ploughed. Uh, I think I couldn't have been quite right up here when, uh, when we did it, but uh, it's paid off. Well, it certainly shows. Yeah. When you come back to your farming now, you've got two boys and they've got, in, I mean, they're in world class. You must yes. be very proud of them. Yes, I am very proud of them. But, but, yeah. it does mean they're not working here all the time. Oh, no, they aren't working here all the time. And it's put, I should say, a few years onto my life. Shortened it a little with work. But uh, I'm very pleased to see them going as they have. Like, I'm trying to carry the farm on for them until they come back to farm, because I know, in the end, they are farmers. 46, 93. I'm trying to find Bembo's bill. Well, I help with filling in the grant forms. I put it down where Gary tells me to put it down. But uh, I don't see a lot of what goes on outside. You're taking a course to be a farm secretary now. Is that yes. to get more involved? Yes, I hope so, yes. So that I can uh, understand and help, be more help filling in the forms. Well, I hope that when she's done the secretary's course that she'll be able to do all the paperwork. I can forget about it all and just go out and do the farm work. Hopefully. Garrett's away a lot more than a normal farmer's would be. I mean, you're a farmer's wife. Did you expect this sort of life? No, not when we first married. But um, I've got used to it now. How important is it to you that he goes there? Very important. Because if he's not ha if he's not happy, then the rest of us wouldn't be happy, and he's not happy unless he's doing well. So it's very important to me that he does do well. We've altered the chain adjusters standard machine has got like an adjuster which comes out of the rear of the swinging arm and as soon as you take the spindle out the adjuster falls on the floor so then when you've got to put the wheel back in you've got to pick the adjuster up put it in place hold the wheel in place and put the spindle in but with our adjusters they're fixed to the swinging arm and you can take the wheel out and the chain adjustment is constant it's still there so when you've got to put the wheel back in it's just a matter of holding the wheel in place and putting the spindle through Gareth does all, all the work on the bike I ride it and tell him what to do, or what I want done. And fair play, he's an ace. No two ways about it. Everything's got to be perfect. But uh, it's proved to be the right way to do it, because I've been riding endurance now five complete seasons, and ne never dropped out of an event with a mechanical problem in five years. I think that'll take a lot of beating.
brakes aren't very good on it, so I'll just put this new brake unit on it. The shoes are gone pretty bad. And with the cable, you're not long replacing it. It should be okay. But the brake works very well, a disc brake. Better than this, because as soon as you've been in water and you just sort of pull the lever on, it, um, it clears itself straight away. With these, it, they take, you know, a mile perhaps before it'll have uh, cleared itself. It's very dangerous, actually, because uh, once you go through water and you may be coming onto a, a road or something, you might be perhaps going up 70, 80 mile an hour. And uh, the, the brakes are non-existent then for a couple of miles and you may forget to have dried them out. It's so, it's so important, as soon as you come onto a road or, or you've been through water, you've got to dry your brakes immediately because uh, the, the brakes are just not there. It's so dangerous. I think that's when really a lot of accidents do happen. People don't dry their, uh, their brakes out. Down over the slippery rocks again, down to the water. We're very steady here, to make sure not to drown the engine. A slippery climb up now, plenty of throttle. Out to the forestry road. More water. Tree stump by right here. Some more tree trunks in the rut. Into the water again, soft mud. Plenty of throttle. More water. Tree trunk on the track here, steady over that. Come to a very big drop, very gingerly down here. Down here now there's plenty of heather. So that usually signifies that the ground's fairly dry. No problems. So as we're dropping down to this holly here, changing from heather to nardus and malinia, that should signify that the ground's a bit wet around here, so I'll have to be a bit careful. Get out into the rushes, try and get some grip. Real hard exhausting preparation is what makes champions. But one advantage Garin does have over most of his rivals is all the right sort of country right on his back doorstep. We've never got tip top cattle, if you know what I mean here, because as soon as they come somewhere near, they've gone. Right. We don't wait until we've got 20 to go. They'll go in fives and sixes and what have you as soon as we think. Now's the time to go. They've gone like our best sucklers all went straight off the cows. Right. Because we felt that if we keep them and wean them, they'd sink. And it would take us sort of two or three months to get them back up. And so they've all gone. Yeah, well, there's some useful heifers here now, aren't there? Yeah. Oh, there's, I think there's about half a dozen here that'll most probably go next Wednesday. Yeah. We'll see when we get them in. Grogs, get there. Grogs. Lad grog. Lad get. Grogs. Lay down, lay down. The majority of the greys are Welsh, uh, Charlie Cross Welsh Black. Is that right? The yeah, grey ones. Because it gives them tremendous frames. Then see? the red ones are usually uh, uh, Charlie Cross Hereford Frisian. Yes. Yeah. You don't have any. Uh, you don't. Have, you don't have any short one here. No. In your well, cattle. Just the odd uh, one in some odd cross in, in the odd cow. You know. Yeah. Good old. You know. Good old. I hope these will all be gone from here before the end of December. How long does it take you to get into these things? It's difficult to remember where everything is and what's been going on. That's the problem. You know, you're at home for a week, away for a fortnight, at home for a week, away for another fortnight, and you just lose track of what's going on. You've moved away, you've moved around far more than most people would with your bikes. Yeah. Has that made you get itchy feet to go somewhere else? Um, a little bit sometimes, but I don't know. The way I look at it, there's black crows everywhere. 
Better the ones you know than the ones you don't know. The black crows, that's the problems? I think so. <laughs> you haven't got many problems with this lot. No, but... <laughs> green, the grass is always green on the other side of the fence, isn't it? You've got to be very careful because it isn't always. No, oh, that's right. It's a wonderful thing with this rat cane now. They don't feel that, do they? Oh, it's wonderful. Much better than running around the kit, fighting and what have you with it. I think it's essential to do them young enough as well. Oh, yeah, do that's them, right. Do them young before the, the horn gets uh, strong and dry. Tell me, you two. Do you, uh, do you divide up the jobs on the farm between you, or do you tend to overlap? Oh. Gareth? No, I, I think we split the work up pretty well. We, uh, there's no one that does uh, more with the sheep than there are. Uh, he does more with the cattle. We just split it, it depends who's here, and we just carry on, docking anything, you know. So you're now, you're now you've, got this, you've got this tremendous teamwork going between you, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, Eh? It's the same with the bikes. But I mean on the bikes. Yeah. And on the farm. But yeah. you're both married, you're going to drift apart yeah. inevitably. Oh, yes. I suppose one day yeah. it will uh, we drift apart. Okay. Um, but we still have a very good understanding in whatever we do. It doesn't make no difference, you know, if he's doing the sheep. I'm there with him. It's the same with the cattle. Will you miss working together? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Because I rely on him and he relies on me. <laughs> right. And tell me, will you miss it when you two have to drift apart and do your own thing? Oh, yeah. It'll be a big problem. It will? Yeah. Hope it doesn't happen. This is the last special test of the Beacons Enduro and I have something like a half minute lead so I've got to be very careful not to go so fast as to come off but I still have to go quick enough not to lose my half a minute lead. It's a matter of going steady where the going is a bit dodgy. Fairly easy riding, no problem here. So easy on this fresh grass to slide off on these corners. It's very difficult when you know you've got a decent lead to ride as well as you would had you not. Oops, things went wrong a bit there. But fortunately, I got through the end of the tapes. Well, what about that then, Gareth? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> had a little miss at them, but it was all right. It's the main thing, he didn't make no mistakes otherwise. He wasn't supposed to go too fast. <laughs> so I just hope he gets to the finish now. That's what it's all about. And uh, as long as the lights work, it'll be okay. controls. How much time you got on there? Eh? Time you got? Take it out. Put your chain on the board. If you're early, you do a little bit of maintenance, just tighten the chain and check the machine over to wait until your time is due. It's important to go in on time. You mustn't be early. If you're early, you'll be penalised the same amount as being late.
front wheel's getting a bit worse to wear, you know. Yeah. She's wobbling soundly, but she's long as she's solid, tight. <laughs> end of the event. We've now uh, done the two days and we've got the final inspection. The lights have to work and all the parts which were marked on the machine at the start have to be on it at the finish. Here I've got a problem with the rear light. But after sort of 16 hours of riding, that's not an awful lot wrong with the machine. It's still a bit of a bind having to repair it after all this time. I think it's a silly idea that the uh, lights having to work at the end, fair enough at the beginning, but I can't see any point in having the lights to work at the end. But after all, it's really an endurance event for man and machine, so I suppose you're proving that the machine is reliable. How was that one? Really tough and demanding. I think that's what proves, you know, that proves what a good rider is. What a lot of determination, you've got a will to go on. You really pleased? Yeah, I won. <laughs> so I've got to be pleased. <laughs>